And you're listening to News Talk 1340 WJRW. John Gonzalez, MLive.com, the Grand Rapids Press, and the Going Gonzo Radio Show weekdays at 1 o'clock. This show brought to you by Mercantile Bank. Visit MercBank.com to find out how Mercantile Bank can take you and your business to the next level. Mercantile Bank, here to get you there. And as I continue my day here in Traverse City, Michigan, going to the National Cherry Festival, several days still left right in front of you. Tonight's big concert is Foreigner. Uh, and then on uh, Tuesday night, uh, it looks like uh, it will be Duke Tomato and the Power Trio. On Wednesday, it looks like we're going to have Aaron Tippin with Detroit native Jana Kramer. And then on Thursday, you can check out Old Friends, Simon and Garfunkel, a tribute taking place on Thursday, the 4th of July. Friday and Saturday, the entertainment continues with Edgar Winter and Rusted Root on Friday. And, of course, 1964, the tribute on Saturday. I'm with uh, Trevor Takach from the National Cherry Festival. And uh, I, when I saw you for the first time this weekend, Trevor, which which was right before the Big Sticks concert on uh, Saturday night, uh, you were a little hairy. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, uh, go that way, Gonzo. You know, uh, you got a lot of people out there. It is. It was crazy. It was a great kickoff uh, for our festival. And, you know, the weather's been cooperating. It's really been a wonderful kickoff for our uh, customers and our volunteers are pumped up, having a good time. But, yeah, those that first day has always got a lot, a lot of moving parts, trying to finalize everything, get it right for the customers. I think the it hit me Saturday because you have the air show in the afternoon, and, and there are people out everywhere. It's a beautiful day. The evening, the night uh, air show. Uh, so for, for me, a first-timer, can you imagine when you see this for the first time, right? And then it was Sunday that kind of took my breath away because I went down to the Arts and Crafts Fair, and I'm like, I was like, yeah, go check out some of the Arts and Crafts. And I've been to several of them, you know, over the years, and I love them. I've never seen so many people in my life. The, the streets were just packed. Well, it's a great place to come shop and have fun. The bay is right down the street. You can see it while you're shopping down the road. And it's really cool because the open space park where we have the majority of our events, the carnival rides for the kids, the food court, the farm market, it literally, the, the arts and craft show connects that to what is our another uh, staple event, our car show right. in Old Town. So you've got just an amazing walk through Traverse City, beautiful uh, setting. But yeah, you're right. Tons of people out having a good time. Tons of people have, no, of all ages too. I see moms, dads aunts uncles brothers sisters little kids you know yeah we're generations of fun that's our motto <laughs> well for the first time experience for me it is has been a great time and i know you've been how long have you been here now with the well, i grew up in traverse city okay uh, so the festival means something special to me i remember it growing up I've, some of my most vivid first memories are sitting at parades on the on the curb with the rain coming up like pouring down so hard that it's then uh, coming up over the curb, uh, we got a lot of stories like that in our history of 87 years. But uh, my wife and I moved back to the area seven years ago. Seven I got years, started yeah. with the organization seven years ago. This is my seventh festival. I've been, uh, this is the second year as the executive director okay. of the festival. And uh, different than uh, last year? I, <laughs> I guess I'm probably more comfortable. Um <laughs> Uh, and feel like I'm more in my place. But, um, you know, we worked really hard over the course of the year to make sure that we were providing what we thought was the highest level of entertainment and the best customer experience that we could. Uh, and with a, a year under my belt, I felt more confident going into it to make some uh, some tougher decisions and, and tr- pull some triggers on things we haven't done in a while, increasing our uh, the caliber of entertainment on the Bayside stage, trying things like a night air show. Right. Yeah, those things we haven't done in a long time. We've never done a night air show, and we haven't had that caliber of entertainment uh, like we have this year in a long time, too. So, you know, uh, I think it's all for the best. Customers seem to be happy. A lot of people in town having fun. Well, you know, I've been staying here at the uh, Park Place Hotel, and it's only a couple blocks away from the uh, open uh, space park there. And I, the thing about it, Traverse City and being down here for the festival is that everything is so navigable, so close by. You can walk to restaurants. You can walk down to the show. Uh, it's an easy, it's an easy, uh, you know, day out. It is. Uh, the, like I said, the majority of our events are right there in the open space park. But you're right. Uh, John, those, the downtown is literally footsteps away. Beautiful downtown, an award-winning downtown uh, in the, for the nation, actually. Uh, wonderful shops, delicious restaurants. We, of course, have our specialty foods down there and uh, special cherry cuisine, but there's some amazing uh, restaurants, uh, breweries, and wineries um, that are all represented downtown and or in a close proximity within walking distance. Well, and I've uh, been making it my goal to hit about every single one of the breweries, so uh, I've got some more 
work uh, to do today. Hey, you mentioned uh, the cherries, and obviously it's the National Cherry Festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people mentioned uh, on Facebook, I think it was, mm-hmm. that the cherries were not from Traverse City, that they were shipped from out of state. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I, I better check into this. Okay, now right now it's, you know, early July or late June, early July, and I think everyone knows this is not your prime cherry season. Well, you know, that's true. Um, we normally start to, well, but I will say this. Uh, in our defense, um, which was brought up by one of the farmers, the Send family, Nita Send brought it up, and she's, uh, her husband sits on the Cherry Marketing Institute, and that's a national body, uh, and she's one of our top volunteers who's always down in the open space promoting. She reminded us that, hey, listen, if you were going to try to predict the crop and when it would come due, and for those downstate who go to the uh, Tulip Festival, right. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. You cannot predict a harvest just like you can't predict when those flowers are going to blossom. Right. So to try to build a festival around the dates that you think the cherry is going to come to uh, to harvest, uh, you'd have to choose your dates in May. Well, that's unrealistic for a national festival. But that being said, all the cherries we've served this year, the sweet cherries that have been provided by two of our farm market vendors, are from Michigan. All of them are from Michigan. And I've been told by a number of farmers here in the area that they're shaking sweet cherry uh, cherries off the cherry trees this week right now. Right. And so we're going to have Traverse City Cherries for the Cherry Festival. So we're proud of that. But it's uh, keep in mind, too, we're, we're recognized as the tart cherry um, producer for the for the nation. 75% of the nation's tart cherries come from Traverse City. That's why we're the cherry capital. Because right. that's such a unique thing that we do. A lot of those cherries go into things like the concentrates, the dried cherries, pies, preserves. Right. Those aren't the ones you're going to grab out of a cup and just eat uh, <laughs> fresh. Right. So, you know, we want the local sweet cherries here too, but um, there's a wide variety of cherries, and we're, um, as I mentioned, the National Cherry Festival, and so we're trying to bring national recognition to a fruit that we hold dear uh, here in this region. It's very important to our history. So um, I think we're doing our job. I've gotten a number of calls from farmers and uh, uh, the industry saying, you know, keep up the good work. We appreciate all you do, and uh, the bigger we make our celebration, the more we promote the cherry, the better it is for them in the long run. So this weekend, you definitely, it looks like, best case scenario, you'll have uh, local Traverse City cherries, the sweet cherries, for uh, the local uh, you know, uh, festival goers. And that's good news. Speaking of this weekend, uh, a big event is coming up, not only in Traverse City, but throughout the state of Michigan, uh, the celebration of, our, of course, our nation's birth, the 4th of July. Uh, I have never been to a 4th of July fireworks here in Traverse City, overlooking the West Grand Traverse Bay. I would imagine it's pretty spectacular. That whole day is amazing. I tell you what, this will be the first time, because we shifted our dates a little bit this year, our children's parade will actually occur on the 4th of July. So there's going to be a lot of patriotism with that parade. And just prior to it, um, uh, no, uh, uh, nationally recognized uh, um, uh personality uh, Carter Osterhaus oh, yeah, from HGTV sure. is going to do his Carter's Kids Fun Run, a uh, one-mile run with the kids just before the parade, and we do a golden mile uh, with the elite runners just prior to that. So there's a lot of um, excitement uh, building up to the fireworks show, of course, the concert that night. But, yeah, be two beautiful fireworks shows, not only on the 4th, but then on the 6th, our finale day on Saturday, we also do fireworks over the bay. Really beautiful. You come right out on the beer ta- in the beer tent right on the water's edge, watch the show, or sit in the concert area, watch the concert, then turn around, watch the fireworks over the bay. It's really cool. A lot like uh, you know um, Saturday night, where you had the concert with sticks, and then you know seconds later they're they're off the stage. You turn around, and <laughs> there are, there's the air show. It was amazing. I've gotten so many calls. My phone blew up right after it got over. With people did not know what to expect, and that was way above and beyond what we thought we'd get. It was really cool. Well, you want to hear the funny thing? I was I was walking out of there to watch the air show, and there were a lot of people that were entering into the grounds there. And I was kind of meeting them as I was going walking out of the grounds. They're like going, "Oh yeah, that's right. There is a night air show this year." You know, they were all they were all kind of, and, and it was early because I think it was mm-hmm. uh, ten o'clock, right? Yep. And uh, they thought, "Hey, I thought this was at ten thirty. And they yeah. were like, "What's going on? These planes are everywhere." But <laughs> yeah, it was we, fun though. We bumped it up a little bit to make sure that all the acts could do their full performance. It worked out great. Oh, yeah. It looked gorgeous, and uh, people had a really good time. A lot of people were cheering and clapping from the beaches. I'm like, "Wow, well that's pretty unique. Uh, oh, I yeah. don't think they can hear you up there, but that's cool. It's like <laughs> being at a movie and clapping at the end. It was really, really spectacular." 
<laughs> well, uh, Trevor uh, Takachi, we thank you uh, for being on this show. Is there anything else that you want to add, maybe about how to get more information, if people want to come up here on the 4th Uh-oh. of July, how to get here and all that good stuff? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, when it comes to trying to find hotels and places to stay, maybe you want to camp. Um, the uh, local uh, Convention Visitors Bureau does a great job helping out. I encourage people to go to TraverseCity.com. Uh, check out their website or call them. They can give you more information on what's available. Our website will give you more information about the schedule. 150 events, 85% of them free to the public. Uh, cherryfestival.org. Uh, you can buy tickets there, register for events. We've got one of the longest standing foot races. It's our 41st year of doing a foot race. It comes right down the parade route on the finale day, Saturday, July 6th. Uh, or, you know, for those tech savvy people out there, we have a tremendous app uh, that we just released this year with Yoda Mo, uh, a local company that's doing international work. Now, um, it's a really cool app uh, available on the iPhone or your Android where you can actually select the events you want to go to so you don't have to sift through all the events every time. You've got your own favorites list. It'll it. send you notifications. Make sure you get to your stuff. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. So some other fun stuff in that app. I, I encourage people to download it and check it out. It's free to the public. So. Join, join us. All right. Have fun. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Looks like I know what I'm doing this weekend, too. <laughs> Trevor, we appreciate your time on this show. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. All right, coming up next, we're going to take a quick little break here. And then, you know what? I'm going to go try some of those cherries, those sweet cherries, and, and check them out myself. Maybe talk to some of the growers here on the Going Gonzo Show on News Talk 1340 WGRW. And that's the sun of sunshine.